on to our Buzz and Jam program, right? So for today, we'll be having our final session, and that is the Nature Jam session. So yesterday, we had the Buzz session where we learned about bees and where we celebrated World Bee Day. So for today, we are celebrating International Day for Biological Diversity. So every year on May 22nd, right, it's known as International Day for Biological Diversity, in short, IDB, but we're celebrating it today. And with each year, there's a different theme, right? And the theme for this year is we're a part of the solution. And that is a wonderful team, right? Because what we do, right, determines whether it has a negative or a positive impact on the environment. So of course, we're part of the solution. So for our Nature Jam session, our topic today is Vibe with Nature. All right, but before we get into our presentations for the day, we're going to enter our fun zone segment. All right, so we're going to play a game of Jeopardy. All right, so I'm going to share screen the game with you guys. Once you've seen the game, you can type in the chat. All right, awesome. So I'm going to invite three persons to, to respond with the word, the letter I, right, in the chat. And the first three persons that respond with the person playing the Jeopardy game. All right, so we have Akila Malcolm. We need two more persons. Okay, Mishka and Gervonte Walters. All right, so those are the three persons that we'll be using. All right, so for your timer, we're going to use the Jeopardy sound. So once you hear the music stops, means that your time is up. So you're getting 30 seconds, all right? So all the best, guys. So Akila, you're up first. General knowledge for 100. All right. And the timer begins. You're free to answer before your time is up. Rio Mino. All right, let's see if you're correct. All right, you are correct. So that's 100 points for you. All right, Mishka, your turn. Animals, 100. All right, and your time begins. Um, I. And five, four, 
need to wash. Vipers. Okay, let's see if you're correct. <laughs> no, this is a picture of the Jamaican yellow snake or the Jamaican bull, which is endemic to Jamaica. All right. Javante, your turn. Javante? Sorry, it's still, this, I cannot hear Javante, so it's okay. All right, anyone else want to fit in? in? Okay, Javante, you can tell me what topic you're selecting. Miss Ecosystem. Wait, not, not you, Mishka. It's um, Javante's turn. All right, true or false? All right. We want, okay, 100. Cool. All right, your time begins. Answer is no. Let's see if you're right. The answer is true. Jamaica indeed has a rich biodiversity. <laughs> All right, Akila, your turn. Akila? Oh, I am not seeing the panel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, ecosystem 100. All right. Let's go. Your time begins. A far east? Let's see if you're right. And you are correct. It is a farce. All right, Mishka, your turn. Terms 100. All right, Terms 100. Your time begins now. means that it is it belongs it is it is a continue if it belongs in jamaica all right let's see if you're correct all right so i give you the points right so the plants are animal can only be found in jamaica all right Javante, your turn. Animal. Right. Oh, <laughs> sorry. 
There's no 300. It's only 400, Javante. All right, your time begins. I believe you're trying to say iguana. So let's see if your card. All right, so it is an iguana, but it is the Jamaican iguana, right? Which is also endemic to Jamaica, meaning that it's only found here in Jamaica. But I'm going to still give you a point. All right, it's going to be the final one for each of you guys. So, Akilo. All right, true or false, 300. All right. When your time begins. All right, <laughs> let's see if you're correct. And you're in part. The answer is true. Jamaica does have the largest remaining. Y'all have some parts within the Caribbean. All right, Mishka, your turn. Final question. Ecosystem 400. All right. And your time begins. What type of ecosystem is this? I see water, I see two trees. Just like some proper roots there in the water. Your time is up, Mishka. <laughs> All right, so the answer is it's a mangrove ecosystem. All right, um, Gervonta, your final. All right, true or false. And the last one is 500, so let's see. All right, and your time begins. All right, so your answer is true. Are you correct? Let's find out. All right, you are correct. Congratulations, Gervonti. All right, so now we are going to watch a short video before our guest presenter presents. All right. So let me share screen. So as we're, cel we're celebrating International Day for Biological Diversity. So it's a short video just sh showing a part of Jamaica's biodiversity, mainly birds.
going to invite Monica Johnson to introduce our guest presenter for today. Hi. Good afternoon. I am Lilika Johnson, the librarian of the Natural History Museum of Jamaica. And I'm just going to introduce to you our guest speaker for today's presentation. Our guest speaker for today is Mr. Delroy Thorny. He is the outreach officer at the University of the West Indies Discovery Bay Marine Laboratory and Field Station. He is a graduate of the University of the West Indies, Mona, with a degree in environmental biology. Through his job, he reaches the minds of many and informs them about the importance of the environment in which we all live and should cherish. Delroy is also an open water diver with a love for preserving the environment in a healthy manner through education for future generations to enjoy as he believes if we take care of the environment, it will indeed take care of us. Please let us welcome Mr. Delroy Thorny. Thank you very much for that introduction. It was very well done. Good day, everyone. My name is Delroy Thorny, and I'm the outreach officer here at the Discovery Bay Marine Lab. Now, today I'll be giving you a little presentation on biodiversity in honor of World Biodiversity Day, which is tomorrow, or we're celebrating it today. And to do that, I'll be going through a short presentation with a very interesting video talking about the biodiversity which can be found here in our local seas. Now, to get started, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, Mr. Dell. All right, lovely. All right, so welcome to the Nature Jam session. This National History Museum of Jamaica initiative, they invited me here to give my part and I'd like to vibe with you as we talk about nature a little bit. So let's begin. First things first, what is biodiversity? The simplest way to put it is that biodiversity is the variety of all living things on earth, whether it's in a specific area or it is with in the whole earth, the whole, every single ecosystem of the earth, the variety of life. And this variety of life ranges from even the tiniest things. So things which are beyond our eyesight, viruses, we cannot see them, but there are a variety of viruses. For example, the COVID-19 virus, which we're facing right now in the pandemic, it is known as a coronavirus. And just like the corona, it's a coronavirus, just like the influenza or the flu. So COVID-19 and the flu are a variety of the same virus, the coronavirus. So you see where biodiversity plays a role even in the most minute cases. And it doesn't stop there. Tiny organisms to organisms such as your cats, your dogs, your birds, even the largest organisms such as whales currently. And it doesn't stop there at all. Plants are also very important when it comes down to biodiversity because plants provide 70% of, 70 to 75% of all food on the earth for all human beings. And this is due to the, first, the versatility of the plants to exist in many different forms. So we can have more than one different crop. So everybody can get something to eat or use for other means. Now, let's talk about biodiversity by seeing what biodiversity looks like. I want to pay attention to this small video right here. It should give you a good insight into what biodiversity is like here in our seas.
All right. So as you saw in that video, our coral reefs that are here in the Caribbean and all over the world account for 25% of all living organisms that can be found in the sea. And I decided to show you guys a few of them that we interact with on a daily basis or on occasion here at the Marine Lab. So on this side over here, you can see the black sea urchin, which many people have come to know, unfortunately, by being stung by it. And there is a rumor going around that if a black sea urchin stings you, you should urinate on it. That is a definite lie. You should avoid doing that at all costs. You're more likely to get infected if you do that. So if you do get stung by a black sea urchin, what you should do is get some warm vinegar and soak the wound in it so you can dissolve the spine or you can just get a tweezer and pick it out. And next to it is a porcupine fish. Now this porcupine fish is actually a puffer fish. It's just that they have these long spines on their body, thus the name porcupine fish. But locally in Jamaica, they're known as sour salt fish. And over here, we have the comet star, which is just like a sea star, but they're a bit different. They have tougher bodies and they move a lot slower than the average sea stars. Over here, we have a seahorse. These have, they have become very rare to spot nowadays due to the conditions of the waters that are around the island. They prefer more pristine, clean waters. And this one was found off the dock of our Discovery Marine Lab by one of our previous interns, Mr. Anthony Johnson. And over here is an anemone, which is just like a coral, but they are the bigger versions in terms of the gelatinous mass because corals produce these large stony structures that act as boulders in the sea and provide a home for many fish. As I mentioned earlier, 25% of all sea life live between the structures of these corals. So they're extremely important. So the biodiversity that stems from these corals existing is tremendous. And mm. the coral, coral reefs, matter of fact, are known as the rainforest of the sea. And they can compete with the Amazon jungle with the amount of different species that they have over there. Now, some more footage, you can see some of these animals in action. The urchin, for example, this one is called the white urchin or the pincushion urchin. You can see by the white looking spines, looking like a pincushion. And here you can see it pulling a piece of seagrass into its mouth, which is underneath it to feed. So they feed on both seagrass and algae. So they keep the environment around the corals clean so that way the corals can survive and reproduce and grow even more. And then over here we have a starfish. The most common one, a cushion star. These are also becoming harder to find, just like the seahorse. But you mostly find them in seagrass patches and some sandy patches. And here you can see him trying to turn himself back over as he was flipped on his side. Now, the importance of biodiversity. Biodiversity is extremely important because it maintains a balance in the environment. How does it do this? It's simple. Biodiversity ensures that there is a variety of living things, animals, plants, bacteria, viruses. Every type of living thing on earth depends on each other to survive. And without that biodiversity of the variety of different organisms, then there wouldn't be an abundance of food for each organism. As it states right, it ensures that the abundance of food, the second importance. So because there's so much diversity in the living structure of our earth, almost every single thing, a matter of fact, every single thing that's living on the earth right now has something that they eat and there is a supply for them based on what the earth provides. And this is all due to biodiversity. And when you have this endless supply of food being given to animals, even us, we depend on biodiversity for a majority of our food. Other the fish that we eat in this from the sea, other plants that we grow, biodiversity. And it prevents the extinction of many different animals. Because if there's a constant supply of food and there's a constant amount of each species, then biodiversity ensures that extinction is less likely to happen. That is, if the animals or organisms have traits which are favorable to survive in the environment. 
Now, one thing that can lead to extinction apart from the lack of biodiversity is the push from human, the inf human influence. So humans tend to speed up certain processes such as the reduction of biodiversity through overfishing, through over harvesting of resources such as wood, because biodiversity ensures that we have wood to create all the things that we need, such as houses, furniture, logwood, coal. Wood is a natural resource and it is response, it's a responsibility that we have gotten to taking care of because of biodiversity. We have plenty of different trees that produce different types of wood, mahogany, birch, oak, all these different trees for different purposes. So biodiversity is extremely important in that it provides so much for us. You may not think that biodiversity affects you, but it does. So every time you're taking a drink of water, just remember that there are some bacteria that are in the soil that help to break down certain things to prevent the water from getting too contaminated. Organisms which help to clean the water as well. And then it goes through our filtration process and cleaning process afterwards. But without nature, these natural resources which we have would fade away. And before we talk about more of the solutions to the biodiversity, we're going to jump back to Tiona who has an icebreaker for you guys to lighten the mood and let you become a little bit more entertained. So heading back to Tiona right now. Sure. Hey, thanks a lot, Delroy. Right. So it's actually a video. So okay. we're going to watch a short video on eight solutions in terms of how we can become part of the solution. Miss, are you hearing me now? Miss? Miss? So we just got eight solutions in terms of how we can help all right, to preserve biodiversity. All right, so at this moment, we're also going to have a live performance from Kiana Dennis, right? She is a past member of the Greater Portmore Juno Center, which is a part of the program's coordination division here at the Institute of Jamaica. And through the Juno Center, she has entered numerous um, competitions in JCDC and also 
Minimis Portmore, where she was second runner up. So I now invite Miss Kiana Dennis to give us a live performance in the form of a poem. All right. Thank you, Miss Thomas. Thank you so thank you so much for the program for inviting me on today. Um, I'm going to be doing two I'm going to be doing two poems. Uh, the first one is Dirty Tough by Louise Bennett Coverley. Sun a shine. But things not bright. Do a pot of boil. Be clean enough. River flood. But water scarce. Rain a fall. But dirty tough. Things so bad nowadays. When you ask my or them too. Them free, they take it and them back. So then the answer, yo. People no care how oh, much we that work for. Hard time, me and I will shut. We a fight, but hard time I beat we. They might raise we wages, but one pound gun power pay. I will not feel no merriment for 10 pound gun power food and 10 pound power rent. Selfish gone up, mackerel gone up, pork and beef gone up. I went rice and butter ready, then just go on holiday. Clot, boot, pin a needle gone up, ice, bread, taxis, water rate, kerosene, gasoline gone up, mm. and the pound devalue it. The price of bread gone up so high. That we are fair agree for cut we are palm bread <laughs> and I turn dumpling refugee. All them maggots sweated way, then go on like fat is a sin. All them they were fast with me, <laughs> I left them to dumpling. Sun a shine, I'm pat a while. But things not bright, bickle not enough, rain a fall, river a flood, but water scarce and dirty tofu. And the next poem I'm going to be doing is Child Molester by C. Miller. No, it no go so. Me and you, I no come below. Boy, I no touch me for me and which part I no you no understand. This a man you too bright and tasty. Oh, you feel want get little little me? Go and go move your size and move from ya. Me I go tell me mother and me father. Pant up a lot, me I go tell me brother. Make the three of them box you over. Me no wanna see it, me no go na your car. Not because me a walk go far. Me is a little girl who know I want my word. You is just a grown pervert. <laughs> that that poem was actually very it's a very it's a very important poem to me because it inspired it inspired me to do a lot of performing and that is all i have but before i leave i'm going to leave you with a quote of inspiration but 
from by Mahatma Gandhi. Be the change that you want to see in the world. This is a very important quote because it helped, it well inspired me to work hard and be a role model for younger for younger children today. I want to be a person who child who children can look up to and see me as a good role model and be encouraged to work hard and be successful every day. So as I as I hand back over to our host, I want you to ask yourself as you have a good evening, who do you want to change? Who do you want to be when you grow up and how can you be the change that you want to see in the world? Have a good afternoon. Have a good afternoon boys and girls. I hope you enjoy or the rest of the program. Okay, thank you very much, Tiana, for those two wonderful points. So guys, it's Child's Month, so we couldn't leave you guys out. All right, so that's part of our vibe segment. All right, so now we're going to hand over back to our guest speaker, Mr. Delroy Thorny, as he continues. All right, thank you very much, Tiana, and powerful speech, Kiana. Love the poetry, it's wonderful. These artists sound like a great inspiration to the young children out there. Okay, so we're continuing off where we live. So, my role as an outreach officer here at Discover Bay Marine Lab is very critical to the protection of our environment and the protection of biodiversity. Now, as Kiana mentioned earlier, we must all seek to see how we can be the change and the way I chose to make a change is to go into the field of environmental science, particularly marine biology, because it's very important. And this picture right here just shows a little icebreaker of what people in general society think of marine biologists. What I think I do, go diving, versus what my friends think I do, just talking to SpongeBob underwater. My mother probably thinks I'm similar to sharks and very terrified. And society thinking, I just play with dolphins and go swimming every day. And what I really do, which is a lot of reading and learning so I can teach and educate those around me. So a part of marine biology in my field outreach as an outreach officer here at Discovery Bay Marine Lab is to be involved in all aspects of science and outreach. So if you look in the picture here, you see me here doing some mangrove work, doing a mangrove assessment. We also do mangrove restoration projects where we go out to plant mangroves in areas that have been damaged so we can increase the abundance of plants, species there, and in the long run, increasing the biodiversity of the area. Because when you have more mangroves in an area, you find you have a lot more animals. And when you have a lot more animals, a more productive ecosystem, and it benefits us in the long run. Other things that we do here at the Marine Lab we do water quality testing of our bait to ensure the water is clean. You can see right here we're collecting water samples and then we head to the lab to test them out, as well as outreach. So students will come here for visits and we're accepting students now in smaller numbers due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're also doing online presentations as well. But students would normally come, we show them different organisms that exist in the environment and how they can protect them just as Tina showed in the video earlier, she showed us eight different ways in which we can help the environment. And education is one of the most key things to protect the environment and protect each of us going forward in the future, because without knowledge, we're powerless. And as a reason, and for that reason, it is my life's goal to teach as many people as possible through the means of presentations, lectures, videography, all those things, as many things as possible. I try my best to get the information out there because people need to know what's happening in the environment. And if they don't know, then they won't be able to fix it. So how does my profession as an outreach officer help? It is very simple. I take on the role that is necessary to get information out there. I'm also a scuba diver, as they mentioned in the introduction. So I go out into the sea and I do 
marine assessments and I help out wherever I can to do underwater cleanups or anything in that matter of sorts. Because if we don't keep our environment clean, then we can't fix anything. So as a marine biologist, environmental biologist, an outreach officer, and as myself, a human who is interested in protecting the environment and keeping it safe, my profession pushes me to get educational outreach there as much as possible. Because each of you have the potential to do so much. Each of you have the potential to be brilliant and change the country and even change the world. Look at Usain Bolt, a simple man from Trelawney, who's now the fastest man in the world. We have produced so many greats in this country. You can become the next great. So I will continue to teach and research wherever possible so that I can instill information that be helpful towards the future generation of this country. And that teaching is key for every generation. And being that it's child's month, we respect the children who take the time to come and learn. I respect the children who are trying their best every single day and going through this pandemic because it must be rough on a lot of you being at home most of the time. And you still push through and you can become great. And for that, I clap you guys. Continue doing good and continue to push because you can be the best that you can be. And you can help out in so many ways. For instance, whenever we do environmental projects, sometimes we share it on our social media pages and people can volunteer if they want to based on the project. So any way that you can help out in the environment, just keep looking for the information, keep seeking. Don't be afraid to ask questions because asking questions is the best way for you as an individual, as a child to learn. And even as adults, we learn by asking questions. I am not finished learning and I'll continue to learn every single day until my time here on the earth has ended and I've done my part to assist and make the world a better place, starting with my own country and then working my way up as much as possible. So with that, I have to say, thank you for listening to me and thank you for coming out today. We appreciate everything that you've been doing and we appreciate the National History Museum of Jamaica for hosting this venture right now and keeping us informed because we all need a little bit of information here and there. We're never too old or never too young to learn anything new. So with that, I bid you adieu. Have a good day, everyone. I head back over to Tiona now. Thank you, Delaware, for such an awesome presentation and a wonderful empowerment speech at the end. All right, so I join with Delroy charging you guys to be a part of the solution, right? So that our environment will be a safe haven for us to live so that future generations can come and see things in the natural environment and not on display, right? So to end our program, we're going to invite Jordan Grayson, right, to do our bow performance, right, as we say, it's Child's Month, and we want to, you know, have a vibe with you guys, and not just to present information about biodiversity, right, so Mr. Jordan Grayson hails from the Dinton Technical High School, he's an upcoming musician and a graphic artist, I present to you guys Jordan Grayson. Thank you. 
Today is the last day of our program, right, with the Nature Jam session. I just want to say, you know, remember, we're part of the solution, right? So I charge you guys once more to be good environmental stewards, right, protect the environment, spread your knowledge, and also remember to continue to work towards your dreams, right? Don't give up believe in yourself you guys are the future and all things are possible through christ all right so also today's national child's day so happy national child children's day to you guys all right thanks a lot for being here and also you can join us again next week for another program known as the afternoon of sciences on wednesday may 26 at 1 p.m so you guys are free so look out on our social media platform and i love nhmj right for the flyer to see how to join the session for next week so thanks again guys and shout out to my nhmj team for joining me here today and for allowing us to have a smooth program Also, guys, also wants to give a shout out to the National Environmental Planning Agency, right? That's Nepal, who also collaborated with us on this initiative of the Buzz and Jam sessions. Right? It wouldn't have been possible without them, also. Thank you on behalf of Nepal. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome, Ava. <laughs> All right. And see, I'm wearing my yellow for Children's Day. Yes, it's a yellow vibe for children's day. Right. I didn't know this was planned. I did not know this was planned. I just wore yellow. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sorry, like the vibe. It's yellow like too. It's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> right, it was a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. Thanks to all our presenters. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.